Hey all, welcome to Pikers Reefs. On today's episode, I'm gonna show you something really exciting in the Australian marine fish keeping industry, and that's captive bred mandarin fish. All right, so I've just got home from another incredible event at uh, Reefstock Sydney. A big shout out to the Reef Builders crew for putting on another huge, um, really successful event. And uh, you can probably tell by my voice, I'm a little bit under the weather. I had a uh, big Friday night at the event and um, I've been rocking a head cold ever since. So I don't have a heap of footage to show you from Reefstock. I did a setup video, but um, I have taken a few little interviews with um, some people along the way. Uh, that we're just doing some things a little bit different and some things that caught my attention. So um, today's episode is one that um, really got my attention and that's um, just something that sits really well with uh, just my, my thoughts and the way I think the hobby needs to go and that's um, some captive bred mandarin fish. Quite a staple in the uh, marine keeping industry, marine fish keeping industry I should say. And uh, Adam Hill in um, Coffs Harbour has been able to captive breed these and make them available to the hobby. So um, I'll pass over to Adam to tell us all about how, um, how the process works. Uh, G'day reefers, here we are at Reef Stock. Uh, my name's Adam and um, yeah, I've had a great time here and I've bought my um, first uh, commercially available uh, batch of uh, mandarin fish. And uh, we've um, had a, a couple of years now where we've been um, really busy trying to take the hard work out of uh, getting a mandarin fish and keeping one. So we've been successful in uh, getting ourselves a couple of pairs of fish and um, hatching some babies and actually well that's when the fun starts of course. Um, so yeah, hatching the babies and um, raising them, um, which if I had uh, a good day's worth of time, I'm sure I'd be able to explain it all. However, um, it's uh, no easy task. Um, it's been lots of sort of blood, sweat and tears to get to this point, but um, looks like we'll be able to have a commercial quantity available in the future. Always uh, will be from um, Cameron and Anya's store, Gallery Aquatica. But um, yeah, here we are. We've been um, really happy to uh, get the fish feeding on um, uh, sort of something that's very easy for everyone to produce at home. Um, we haven't gone down the path of getting them to eat um, any dry foods yet. However, we have um, have them feeding on uh, live baby brine shrimp. So if you were considering um, picking up one of these in the future, just make sure you've got the ability to hatch some uh, baby brine and um, you should be sweet. They're, um, that's all they've been fed by us. So they don't know anything, any other foods so it's not necessary to have uh, any copepods, um, although they will eat them, but um, certainly um, no problem just to feed them late, live baby brine. So um, at the moment, there is uh, only one other producer of uh, captive bred mandarin fish in the world. Uh, they're based in Palau, so unfortunately we're probably pretty unlikely to see those fish here in Australia. Um, however, they're retailing in the US at 90 US dollars and um, we've priced our fish accordingly at uh, converted uh, 130 Aussie dollars. So they will definitely be available uh, presently at Gallery Aquatica for $130 in the future. We definitely have the other species of mandarin fish in cultivation. Uh, we should have some babies available around Christmas time. Uh, they'll, be a, they'll be around about the $150 price bracket and they'll be the Splendidus variety. So that's the obviously the more popular variety but it is possible and I have done it plenty of times to keep one of each colour in uh, an aquarium. They seem to ignore one another, they don't fight. Um, but I would definitely re not recommend keeping two of the same type. They are vicious little bastards, to say the least. Um, so for a small fish, yeah, they can be pretty, pretty aggressive, yeah. And that's actually one of the interesting things I've found as they've um, developed. Um, once they get to an age of around about 90 days, about three months, um, they really start to fight pretty heavily with each other. So if we keep the, uh, all the babies in one tank, 
um, we start we were starting to see some pretty serious aggression and um, therefore uh, we were pretty concerned about them actually damaging one another and um, obviously having damaged stock available for um, you guys. So we actually have gone to the trouble of um, um, keeping them uh, individually separated from one another and um, that's also allowed us to concentrate the food so that we can um, maximise their growth and their health and keep an eye on each individual fish as we go to to make sure that they're um, progressing and developing as we um, expect they, they would. Yeah. yeah, I mean look you can, you know, you can, you like see this guy here, he's looking at me See, you can see my hand, he's pretty happy to um, actually interact. Yeah, because they haven't actually come out of the ocean, they've always been in an aquarium environment and they're used to people being sort of in their face all the time. Um, they act much more like um, uh, you would expect fish to act um, once they've been in a tank for a significant period of time. Um, these guys are yeah, pretty friendly from the get-go. Um, they're quite happy to interact when you stand in front of them and when you go to feed them, yeah, they actually um, react to the presence of food pretty quickly. Um, whereas the wild, poor old wild ones are, um, yeah, unfortunately um, pretty renowned for their poor, um, yeah, poor survival in captivity and their poor feeding response as well. So, yeah, like, look, in conclusion, I, I would suggest that um, it would be um, really great to get the support of um, the fellow reef community out there. And um, have you guys um, come on down to Cameron and Anya's shop and pick up some fish when you get a chance, if, if you're after a mandarin fish. They are, um, whilst they're not bulletproof, they're certainly a significant step up from um, their wild counterparts. We haven't impacted the ocean in um, producing these fish. We have, we have in fact acquired wild, wild fish to produce these guys. However, um, believe me, those wild fish have got a luxurious mandarin fish life at my, at my um, aquaculture facility. So um, yeah, uh, I mean, you know, yeah, get on down to Cameron and Anya's shop when you get a chance and um, check them out. And um, yeah, look, don't be afraid to um, consider picking up a mandarin fish in the future, especially one of our captive bred ones. All right, guys, that's about all we've got time for today. Um, I hope everyone gets really behind Adam and uh, the team at uh, Gallery Aquatica for uh, just going out on a limb and making these incredible fish uh, captive bred so that we don't impact the ocean. It's a huge step forward in the um, Australian industry. So I really hope that uh, everyone gets on board and gives them a huge amount of support. If you've enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a uh, thumbs up, a like. Um, if you want to see more videos like this, uh, be sure to subscribe because I've got a few more uh, interesting things from Reefstock coming up in the next few days. And of course, if you've got any questions, um, either for myself or for uh, Adam or the team at Gallery Aquatica, be sure to pop them in the uh, comment section down below. But until next time, thanks guys, bye.